Cheryl, welcome. Good to have you with us. Uh, I see that you basically agree with Bill Miller uh, and with Raphael Bostic that inflation may come down into the 3% neighborhood by the end of the year. Do you agree with Bill Miller that overall that will be good for stocks? I, I do agree. I think we are going to have uh, perhaps heightened volati volatility in the front half of the year given an uncertain path of the Fed. But I do think we are starting to see some signs of things like um, supply chain bottlenecks easing um, that are all supportive of a strong rally, I think, in the back half of the year um, and getting ahead of sort of tapering down inflation over the course of the year, um, I think does set up well for a back half of the year in terms of the equity. Is the, are you with Miller who says, basically, I'm not going to be watching the headline numbers so much as I'm going to be watching the inflation expectations? Is that where the smart investor should concentrate? I do think forward expectations are going to be critical. Um, it is clear that the Fed is going to be nimble here and very data dependent. Um, and so I, I think things like uh, labor force participation, unemployment, retail inventory, all of those are going to play into our forward look mm -hmm. and, and how quickly we can manage down to still higher than, than sort of the 2% baseline, but a more manageable level of inflation. So let's get to some of the areas you like in equities right now, and that is value and financials in particular. You think they will outperform growth. You think they will outperform uh, tech. Uh, give us some names and give us the rationale. Yeah, I, I think the call is really predicated on, um, if we step back from a larger picture perspective, banks and diversified financials um, really are the sectors that outperform into a rising rate environment. Over and above the rate story, there's a lot to like in banks in particular. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, inflecting loan growth, a ton of excess liquidity, M&A, all really positive in terms of forward growth expectations. Um, we like names more in the regional and community bank space. I would highlight uh, Wells Fargo on the large end of the spectrum. Um, really, I think, did a good job of earnings. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of the other banks guiding to higher expenses, we've got some leverage there. Um, in the more smaller end of the regional space, we like a, a, a signature bank, a Silicon Valley. These are high-growth franchises that are really asset-sensitive and poised to do well in this environment. All right, Cheryl, thank you very much for your uh, analysis today. We'll have you back soon. Cheryl Pate, we appreciate it. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.